I have waited like an hour to film because of this construction and they all of a sudden just started back again. Why are they being so loud? I am so excited for this video, you guys. I woke up in the mood to do this today and I'm just really eager. They're all here in front of me. They've been doing well and I'm really excited to show you guys the progress that they've made and I'm really excited to pop these up. If you're new here and just joining my channel, welcome. This is going to be part three of my import series. I have done two videos already and I will link them up here for you. This is going to be potting them into a soil mix and I'm really, really excited. Thank you so much for watching this journey with me and the import process. I have a total of six plants and I am going to be doing these all on camera with you and I will make this into chapters so you can skip around if there's a certain plant that you don't really care about or watching me pot up that's totally fine and i will also be answering your guys' questions in this video i asked you guys on my youtube channel if you had any questions and i could answer them while i pot these up and so i wrote them all down on my notebook here i have some questions that were covered on my Instagram as well. This is going to be a long video, so be prepared, grab a snack, get cozy, and let's pot up these plants. Up first, we are going to do our Florida Beauty. I'm just excited to pot this one up, so I'm going to do this one first. So this is the new leaf that unfurled that's all green, and it does have a new growth here that is getting a bit bigger, and this is continuing on the same vine. And I have a couple nodes down in here. They haven't done anything yet. They're like right down in the bottom. And this one here, you actually can see some new root growth. It's gonna be right here. You can see some new root growth in here. And I kind of see some more like various roots in here. I can't remember the dates off the top of my head when I first got the imports and when I first potted them into perlite until now. I believe I got these August 29th, which was a Monday, and so today is September 20th. It is Tuesday. I would say it's been a good three weeks since I first got these imports. I did water the perlite twice since I did the last video, and that's the only thing that I've done. I haven't done, well, I actually did do something to one plant, and I will tell you about that when that plant comes up. So one of the questions I'll go ahead and start was, how often am I watering the plants in perlite? Am I allowing them to dry out? So I watered them twice since they've been in perlite. And so my reasoning for not using a cash pot for perlite, I didn't plan on keeping these plants in perlite that long, so I didn't really feel a need to set them up in that way. I just made sure they didn't dry out. You know, from that initial time, I noticed they were all dry. If you plan on keeping plants in like a semi-hydro setup, then I definitely would recommend using a cash pot, fill it with a little bit of water, and then place your cup in that separate cash pot, the one with the hole, so that it can wick up moisture, you know, through that capillary action. That way the perlite doesn't dry out. And then you just like refill the reservoir if it starts to get too low. So I'm not gonna be taking all this perlite off. I am gonna be potting them with this perlite in here. And again, like any mushy roots that I see, I'll just kind of pull off. I'm not really expecting a whole lot more mush honestly i felt like i got rid of a lot of it from before and i don't want to like disturb the root system too much but do you see this one has so much new roots you see all that white healthy root all in there and it's like rooting new roots off of this one so this one is really really healthy for the beauty i'm not going to be staking him up or anything and since it is like a pretty small root system i'm just going to be potting this one into one of my nursery pots. I have like so many potting mixes there. It's kind of crazy actually. All the plants I'm going to be adding Osmico. It's my slow release fertilizer that I'm using. I'm also going to be adding the mycorrhizal um, inoculants. They're the beneficial fungi. I actually poured mine out into here, but this is what the bag looks like. It's going to help the roots grow. Yeah, I think I'm only, only going to add a pole to two of these right now. And then I have three that I'm potting up and then I believe one is gonna stay in perlite a bit longer. Another question I had on perlite is why I chose to do perlite and why I just didn't choose to leave them in water, I guess. This was just the inoculants I'm sprinkling on the root system. So for the beauty, I'm gonna use my normal chunky mix. 
So I didn't want to leave them in water because I don't really prefer water roots. Water roots are different than roots from like other substrates like perlite or moss. The roots have more aeration and airflow, so it's gonna help them acclimate to a soil mixture a bit better. I just felt like perlite was giving them a little bit of time to help them grow a little bit stronger and let their root systems develop before just, just going like straight into soil. And another reason I felt like I wanted to use perlite was because I could keep an eye on the root system a bit more. You know, moss, sometimes I feel like it's kind of hard to see and with moss too, it's kind of hard to gauge like the moisture sometimes. I don't know. I just felt like perlite was the next best thing to do besides leaving them in water, I guess. Use a little bit of fertilizer, slow release. I like slow release because, you know, it releases over time and I don't have to worry about adding a bunch of different fertilizer to my water all the time. I just feel like slow release has just been a lot easier for me since I do water my plants a lot. And so when I go to water all these, I'm going to water with a probably a dash of Super Thrive just to help them adjust a bit better. Yeah, so that is the beauty. It is all done. And I'll show you all these plants up close at the end too. It's gonna be so nice. I'm so happy to see this potted up. So one down and five more to go. Plant number two, I'll go ahead and do this Scandapsis. It's another easy one that we just did. Exact same thing. I have another four inch pot that I'm gonna use. And so this one, I ended up taking a cutting and I had initially like stuck it in the perlite to continue rooting, but I noticed the leaf was getting a bit soft and it wasn't like tolerating the perlite. So I have it in a jar of water. This is the cutting and it really hasn't rooted yet. You can see the roots getting a little bit, a little bit longer, but not a whole lot. So this little cutting, I'm gonna let root in probably just water so I can keep an eye on it. So I probably shouldn't have cut that so soon, honestly, but it's okay. And so this technically is two vines. This one is starting to push out a new leaf, this one here. And then this was the cutting that I took. So this one hasn't activated a new growth point yet that I can tell. So I'm just gonna be potting this into the soil like this. I'm not going to stake it or do anything else with it. I'm just gonna transition it to soil. And you can see this one, you can see those white roots in there that have formed. And so this one I believe didn't have a whole lot of roots initially, but it definitely has grown some. Yeah, do you see all that, that healthy root there? So I'm not disturbing this any at all. I'm gonna sprinkle some of this micro rhizal stuff on the root system. And I'm gonna use my normal mix. I really don't see any, any extra rot. Pot this right down in here. And I'll eventually propagate this plant, but I'm gonna let him adjust. I think if I could go back, I wouldn't have taken a cutting off of this one so soon. I think it'll be fine. I don't think the cutting is gonna die. It just was getting a little wilty. I just don't think it was uh, moist enough in the perlite for it to like grow roots. So I'm gonna see how it does in the water. I'm excited to do like updates on these plants over time, you know? Let's see. Oh, another question about perlite was, do I need to add nutrients to the perlite? And so I did not. So th my reasoning is because I knew these plants, they weren't going to stay in perlite for very long. And when you have a lot of rotted roots, they aren't gonna uptake nutrients that well. And I didn't feel like I needed to add anything right away. And so if I was gonna keep them in a semi-hydro setup, then I would definitely want to add nutrients probably after a few weeks, I would imagine, just so that they can get some nutrients once the new roots grow. So that's my reasoning. I use Super Thrive in the water initially just to give them a little boost, like right out the gate, just getting the imports. I just felt like that helped them like kind of bounce back a little bit, you know, but as far as the perlite, I chose not to add anything while they were kind of just transitioning. I was gonna pop these up a week ago, but I just didn't feel like the roots were good enough to do that at that point. So 
that's my reasoning. And I do love perlite. I just don't use it very often to root and propagate in just because I prefer sphagnum moss, but I do like perlite and I think it's a good way to propagate and for roots to grow rather than just like just using water. And then once this cutting grows roots, I will stick this in the bottom of the pot. There's that one. Doesn't it look good potted up? It's in my normal mix. I'll probably eventually get this staked at some point, but I think he'll be fine while he's adjusting to soil if I don't do anything to this one right away. Right, on to the next one. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do this anthurium because the other, the Adansonii and the Escaletto, I want to put on the grow thickly poles. And since I have to make the poles and moisten the moss, I'll just kind of save those. So this was the Anthurium Dresserly. And you guys, this thing has so many new roots popping out the top there. Do you see all those? And it also has like quite a few of the roots pushing down into the pot too. And so I honestly, I, ha I haven't really been checking these guys for pests because they have been outside. I'm not gonna keep these in my plant room. So I think over the next week, I'm going to bring them in and then I will let them sit in an area, probably like by my east window maybe, just so they can get some light and just kind of get used to being indoors a bit. And then I'll probably end up spraying all the plants down with like insecticidal soap or something just in case they have any pest. I would hate to bring pest in, you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't think they would have any on, but you never know. So yeah, this one had a pretty significant root system, but a lot of it was rotted, but I'm happy to see, you know, new roots growing in. These mushy bits. And so for this one, I'm actually going to use a clear pot. I like my anthuriums to be in these clear pots that have a lot of drain holes. And I think this is about a six inch, not quite. I'm gonna use soul soils houseplant mix, which I have in a separate tote bin. This is like extra coarse perlite and orchid bark. I'm gonna be adding some of this in there too so that it's so like really, really chunky. I might use a bigger pot for the anthurium, but I, I don't wanna upsize too much at first. So we'll see what the roots look like. Yeah, I feel like this guy has a lot of healthy root. Like all this is like new healthy roots. Whoa, let me bring this. Did you see all that? And I can see all these here on the bottom. I'm not gonna like tug at these because most, the, most of the raw I took off. So I don't really see too much more that has rotted. So I'm gonna pot this into the mix just like this. And again, we're gonna sprinkle some of these inoculants on the root system. Okay. Like, look how coarse that is. Do you see how, like, there it goes. Do you see how coarse that is? So let's do another question. So, oh, I had talked about pest. So one of the questions was, should I isolate imports or quarantine them? And yeah, the answer is that is most definitely because you never know what kind of, you know, pest could be hidden that you may not know, or it could show up later. You just, I just feel like you never know. So it's always good to quarantine new plants. Yeah, I just feel like I would just rather be safe than sorry so to say, so I would rather quarantine new plants. So I'm not gonna leave these in my plant room right away until I can spray them, but I don't wanna spray them because I'm gonna still have them outside for a bit. And I am gonna be ordering some more beneficial bugs here at some point. You know, to use as a preventative. Okay, and then let's see. 
Another question is how often have I been pruning the rot? And so I haven't messed with these plants, you know, besides to water them. I have like, so every morning I've been going out there to check on them. It's like one of my morning routines that I like to do now is I like go out there, make my coffee. I go out there and just like look at them all and just make sure I don't like see anything going on. And that's actually how I, I don't want to like spoil it for the Milano because you guys know that's been the sad one. So the Milano, I did notice something going on with that one that I had to take care of right away and I'll explain that more. But as long as I felt like I was checking on them, I didn't want to disturb them in their home because just like with any propagation, any medium, you don't want to like go digging around there and checking the root systems out because the roots will grow and you'll be able to see them like through the clear pot and that's why I wanted to use a clear pot. I didn't take them out to like prune any more roots at all. I didn't like disturb them. Yeah, as long as I felt they were doing okay, then I was okay with it and I didn't feel like a need to mess with them. And I didn't want to stress them out at all. I cannot believe how good this looks. I literally have like three things of soil open down here on the floor. Look at this, you guys. Look at that mix. Do you see that over the big leaves? Look at how good that looks. Oh my goodness. So I have two big leaves and again, they look still like they look pretty healthy. I see a little bit of browning, you know, tips on there. And I'm really gonna be excited to get him in my cabinet with the rest of them. I actually cleared out my cabinet so my anthuriums could have more room. And I honestly forgot that I had one more anthurium, this one to add in there, but I am gonna be adding this one in my cabinet once I make sure that it's acclimated and it doesn't have like any pests. I'm gonna water these all at the end with my Super Thrive. Who do we want to do next? So this is the Milano. And so <laughs> this plant is the one that I noticed was going downhill, you guys. So you guys knew that I took the top cut from my last video and so I propagated the top cut and then I had a couple extra nodes that I placed in here with it. And then I had the stick part, which you guys may notice that the stick part is missing. So the Milano actually was starting to rot at the base. And so I actually, I noticed it one morning I went out there and I took some footage with my iPhone that I can put on here. So I noticed the base of the stem starting to discolor a bit in yellow, which immediately I knew the stem was rotting because of that, because when I potted it and took this cutting, I knew that the stem, the base felt squishy. I decided not like get rid of the base in case it would survive and root for me. And so when I saw that little bit of yellow discoloration, I knew it was rotting. So I immediately took it out and I cut up the other nodes. And so this is my top part. This is the top cutting. And I had the two um, wet sticks that I took when I first propagated it. And I'm actually going to film this for another video. And so I just grabbed anything that I could use at the time, but this is just some sphagnum moss and I had cut up the other nodes and I put them into here, but I'm gonna be getting rid of this and doing another like video on wet stick propagation. I think that would be really helpful if I do a separate video on that. So basically the bottom part I'll uncover here so I have four nodes that I took off of the Milano. So I got rid of the base and so I have four wet sticks from that. And I'm gonna be, you know, doing a different situation for these. I'm gonna pop them up separately and do a video on that. And the wet sticks that I have in the perlite, I'm gonna be taking out of here and doing, doing them with these ones. So I'll have six Milano wet sticks. So this top cut, I'm just gonna take out and show you. So it is rooting a bit. You can see the new roots on there. And so I'm gonna leave this in perlite longer. So like where I have him in here, the aerial roots aren't really in the perlite and I don't want them to dry out. So I'm gonna stick this guy in one of these other pots that are a little bit taller so I can fit him in there better. Okay, I am back. I took a little break. <laughs> the construction started up again really loud, so I just like stopped filming for a minute and just ate a quick lunch. And so I am back. So I, I actually don't remember what I was talking about with the Milano, 
So I think I was talking about I wanted to get it out of this smaller one because these roots aren't concealed in the perlite very well. So I actually was gonna go get some fresh perlite. I would recommend just starting fresh, you know, so no rot or anything spreads. But I'm actually out of perlite because my Amazon order hasn't like fully gotten here yet. So I'm just gonna use what was in here. This is just a little bit of extra perlite that I had. And then I'm just gonna dump this in here. Just so that all the aerials, you know, are covered. And then what I'm gonna do with this cutting is I'm gonna go ahead and just sit it up in like a semi hydro setup. So I have another cup that doesn't have holes that has some water. And then I'm gonna sit this in the water. I may have gotten too much water in here. You can kind of see the water line maybe moving around. It's like, it's about right here. So I have this sitting in a separate cup and that way it'll just like continue to wick up and hydrate the roots. That way I don't risk the roots drying out on this one because it's the only one left in perlite so I don't want to accidentally forget about it. And I'm not gonna add anything in here as far as any nutrients because this plant doesn't have like any roots really so it'd kind of be pointless. So I'm just gonna leave it set up like this and then once this water is completely gone, then I will refill it. But I should start to get quite a bit of roots, you know, now that those aerials are starting to push out more. So that is all for that one. All right, so we have two left. We have our variegated Adansonii. And so this one, you know, pushed out that new leaf and it is, this will be the first new leaf in my care. It is pushing out another new growth, which is really exciting. And the root system, you can see it's getting a lot of new roots on this one right here. So that's exciting. And so this one I'm gonna add on a grow pole and this one, you know, my Escaletto is the one that's doing the best here. And so this leaf really hasn't yellowed too much more. And, you know, these three leaves are still healthy. This new leaf growth hasn't pushed out or anything. I still, I think it's going to be a while before this guy pushes out a new leaf. But this one has the best root system. Look at all these roots in here, you guys. So, so, so many new roots all over this container. So this thing has really, really rooted for me. So yeah, these are basically gonna be the same process. I'll go ahead and film them both. I do have two separate poles I'm gonna be using. For the Escaletto, since it is a bit of a bigger plant, I'm gonna use Thickly's newer pole. It's gonna be really hard to see. So it, this one is six squares across in the front and it is taller. I will put the name of this one down down here somewhere so you guys can know the name of this one. It's just taller and it's bigger around. And for the Monstera, um, the, varig or the variegated Adansonii, I'm going to use their normal. This is their 2.0 grow pole. So I'm going to use these for these two plants. And the Escaletto in the bigger pole, I'm gonna use, the these are 6.7 inch. And then for the other one, I'm just gonna use my standard. It's not quite six, six inches. So they're literally gonna be the exact same. I found some of this on Amazon. It's like a, it's for when plants, when you're binding plants together, what is that process called? It's like, um, oh, that's gonna bug me. What is that process called? I'm gonna have to look up the name of it. But it's basically like a really stretchy, like transparent thing. And I think it just sticks on to itself. But I'm gonna use this around the grow poles, I think, cause I feel like this would help um, attach it. And then I won't have like green Velcro or pins all over the place. I think this might work better. I don't know. I have grafting tape, grafting tape. That's what this is, grafting tape. See, it came to me. So I'm gonna go get some water and we will make our moss. And I'll probably pan you down a little bit too. Right, I have a bin of water. I'm gonna dump some moss in here. All 
All right, let's do, I feel like I haven't been doing many questions. So I have some questions about like importing themselves. And then I had one more question about like the plants. So another question was, how can I tell that the plants have acclimated? Plants have acclimated. I mean, you can kind of like tell overall like how they're doing. You know, acclim acclimation can take a while, especially for different plants. It really honestly depends on the plant itself. I know when I moved here, it took like four to six weeks for most of my plants to acclimate to this new environment. And it, I think it depends, you know, initially from the get go, like how you cared for them. And if you can give them like that proper environment to help them recover, I think you're better off, like they're better off having a better chance, you know? So it, it's just gonna take time. Yeah, so once they've kind of stopped yellowing, and they're growing new roots and they seem to, you know, be doing okay. It's kind of how you can tell they've acclimated, but again, it's just gonna take time. I don't think there's a certain amount, you know, I would say at least probably a couple months fully because they're gonna go through that transition of, you know, arriving and then being potted up. And then after they're potted up, you know, they're gonna take some time to adjust to their new home. So the, this isn't gonna be a tutorial on these poles. If you want to, so I just used these poles on a repot video I did on my Monstera Stanleyana. So if you wanna see kind of more of how I use these, I can link that video up here for you too. So this is just gonna be like a quick, um, just like making these pretty quickly since I do have two of them to do. And sometimes, you know, plants, you know, they may look okay at first and then maybe they all of a sudden just aren't acclimating and they could go downhill later. So it really just depends. I feel like it's gonna definitely take a few months and until you really, you know, see how they do in the long run, it's hard to really say up front. As long as they seem to be like not yellowing anymore and the roots seem to be doing okay and they seem like they're growing and producing new leaves and I would say they're, pretty well on their way to like acclimating. And then about importing, someone asked, am I worried like the plants would arrive dead? Yes and no, it's like that's the chance you're taking, right? You know, the, the plants are being shipped overseas, you know, to wherever you are from wherever they are and they go through that sanitation process and if they get held up anywhere, like they're gonna be in a box for a while and so there's always that chance. You just have to expect that they're gonna be, I don't know, they're gonna be going through a lot and you just have to kind of know how to, I guess, handle them and be prepared that if the plants go downhill, then there's there's always that chance. I never go into it thinking like they're all gonna make it. Yeah, you can always check to see if they offer like a reimbursement if your plants do arrive dead. All right, so for these guys, I think I'm going to use the Soul Soils mix. You know, they have a pretty good root system, but I prefer their mix to be just like a little extra chunky. Another question was, um, do you have to get a permit? Root Greenhouse actually sent these plants to me, so I didn't have to do anything specific and I've never imported before. So I didn't have to like go through any process. I didn't have to get a permit. I didn't do anything. So I don't really have like too much of an answer just because I didn't really like go through the process myself, you know, they just shipped the plants to me. But I would say if you're importing on your own, I would recommend getting a permit just so that they can get through customs better, you know, and not like risk something happening. So it's really up to you. But I would, I would recommend if you are going to import to go ahead and get it because it's free and why not? You know, why risk something happening to the plants? So, ooh see the root system on this one. Yep, 
Yeah, there's just one little piece of rot down here, but it looks good. Can you guys see the roots on that one? It's gotten so many roots. Gonna use some of our inoculants. Ugh. And we are gonna plop him. Ooh, almost lost the pull. Really excited for this to be on a pole, you guys. This is gonna look so good. And someone was asking about like how how much to pay like shipping and for the fee. And honestly, I have no idea, you guys. I would have to like go in and figure that out. And I think it honestly would depend on who you're actually importing from. I would pay for DHL Express, like I would pay the extra. Some companies may um, offer like free shipping if you order a certain number of plants, but I would definitely opt to pay for DHL Express you, just so that you can get the plants, hopefully like in a faster time period. I just, I just wouldn't take that chance. Like if I was importing on my own and going through this process on my own, I wouldn't take that chance and I would just go ahead and pay for Express. And then I think for the phytosanitary fee, I wouldn't, I couldn't imagine it being more than like $30 or something, I feel like. And the, Shipping probably I would guess probably around like 80 or 90 maybe for Express again I don't really know like exactly How much because I've never done it myself, but that's how much I would guess it would cost I feel like my camera has been overheating Quite a bit. I don't know why I feel like I wasn't recording that long But what I was doing was I was putting so this grafting tape. I actually really like it's really It's almost like saran wrap in a way is what it reminds me of and so this one is done. So I put four of the pieces. So I put one around each node. So I put a piece here and I'll show you these plants up close too. And then a piece here, here, and then here. So I have like the node pressing against the pole. And so it's like holding it there. Look how good that looks. And so I'll probably have to extend this one soon because it's only here and the new growth is here. But I think it looks so good. For now, I'm happy with it. It actually looks really good against this pole. And so this leaf here still has a bit of browning. You know, that's still, still going on. I mean, that's just going to probably continue to spread. And then this top one still had a little bit of browning, but it hasn't like I don't know, if, if, I, if I wanted to, I could always cut that leaf off, but for now I'm gonna leave that. So this one is done and it looks so good. I can already tell the new leaf is variegated. I can see the variegation on it. Yeah, so that's that one and we have the Escoletto next. Why are you being so cuddly today? So we are gonna use the Big Mama pole for this one. And then the last question was benefit of buying import versus buying online. I actually think I had a couple questions around this about like the plants, like are the prices really like better if you import? And I would say it honestly is probably dependent on what you are actually looking for yourself. I would say just based off the plants that I got, like for example, this Escoletto, I mean, I would say these leaves are pretty huge on this plant and I don't know like how mature this plant is, but I probably wouldn't get a plant like this here in the US, at least not like an online seller without it probably costing a lot more money. At least that's what I would think. And I feel like the specimens were pretty decent size, you know? So I feel like that's one of the benefits is probably like a larger specimen. And then it really honestly, I think just depends on what you wanna get whether you want, 
you know, a, a plant that's more difficult to find or more rare, you may have a better chance of importing it in. Yeah, some people have gotten like some crazy big like anthuriums and all sorts of stuff. So I definitely say, I would say like maybe the size of the specimen is probably one of the main reasons maybe people import and they get like a chance to get plants that would cost a lot more money here depending on like the rarity of the plant. I mean, I've gotten like cuttings before and paid like, for example, my new plant that I got off Etsy, the, um, I just blanked on the name. I cannot for the life of me think of the name. <laughs> but the new plant that I got, like I paid $70 and it's an unrooted cutting. And I'm not saying that this plant I would be able to import for cheaper. I was just saying like, maybe I would have had one that maybe was a little bit more mature or, you know, you're definitely taking that risk though. Cause these plants aren't like plants you would buy like online here in the U S I would say if you don't want to risk them arriving dead, cause these plants are going to go through a whole different acclimation period than plants that you would get like through the mail. So you just have to be prepared for that. And I don't, and I, and I think if you're not ready for that, or you don't feel like you could handle that, then I, I wouldn't recommend importing. I feel like I don't buy too many plants nowadays. So I feel like I'm like out of the game on what plants actually cost. I think if you've been curious about importing and you want to give it a go, like I always said, like I was going to do it one day. I just wasn't ready to do it. And so since these were sent to me, you know, I'm happy I got to experience it, but just based off my experience and just based off of what I received and my process so far, I would definitely import. I feel like I would take that chance. You just always have to know that you're taking a chance. And if you can get reimbursed, if something does happen to the plants, then always like check before you buy. The more you know upfront, the better, I guess, so that you're not surprised by anything. <laughs> and if you have in the back of your head that the plants could arrive dead, then, you know, at least you kind of prepared yourself. This is a big pole. I wasn't used to like how much moss I needed to put in this one. So this is their newest pole. I don't know if you can buy these big, big size poles yet. I honestly would have to check their website and see. I think the hardest part for me is snapping all these in here. But again, like the more I make these poles, I feel like the better I'll get at them. She a big pole. She a big chonky pole. Clearly making a mess, you guys. I'm just gonna make sure the moss reach the end of that. I think that'll be okay. I'm going to use the chunky bits on this to fill it a little bit easier. Ooh, look how chunky. Look at that. It is such a chonky pole. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is so exciting. Let me use some of this chonkiness here in the bottom. And we are going to unload the root system on this one. This one had the best roots by far. Oh yeah. Look at those healthy roots, you guys. Look at all those. Very, very happy. Makes me really happy. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I don't really feel a need to ooh, pull anything off. It has enough good healthy roots. I am very, very happy with this. Sprinkle our, our little pepper on here. <laughs> this uh, root system is pretty thick. You know, it is a pretty big specimen, I feel like. So I'm glad I'm potting him into a bigger pot because I feel like he is going to root in here pretty quickly. Now I imagine it's going to take some time for this plant to push a new leaf. 
because especially since I'm potting all these plants up now, they are going to focus on their roots a bit before they, oops, turn them, turn them the wrong way. Don't get mad at me, please don't get mad at me. Yeah, so what was I saying? So it's gonna take some time for all these plants to like acclimate in the pot before they decide to push new growth. If they do decide to push new growth, I would be shocked, you know, if they decide to push something like right away. I kind of wish I could get this more of an angle on this one. But I feel like it's not gonna go at an angle very well. Keep forgetting the fertilizer. All right, got some dirt on the moss. This is looking so good. Never actually have heard of this grafting tape before. I was just like doing a search on Amazon for <laughs> clear tape and this came up. Have white pants on. Well, they're not white, they're like and a beige and off-white like knit pants and I have dirt all over my pants. I keep like rubbing my hands on my pants. <laughs> So this is the lead leaf here. And so the one up top, you can barely see it. So the new growth is gonna come out of this one. I just wished I could have gotten it down a little bit more. It's kind of like more up than what I wanted. I think it'll be okay. I think the new growth will be able to get out of there okay. I just couldn't like anchor it better in here. I'm happy with it. I think it looks really good and I'll be like, really excited to extend on top. All right, so we are all potted up. So what I'm gonna do, I haven't watered anyone yet. I think I'll take you to my bathroom so we can water everyone with Super Thrive and then I will give you a closer look at everyone and we'll go from there. This is just my watering can. I just filled it with my tap water. So I like to use this for transplanting and repotting. It just helps reduce like a little bit of shock. And so usually you add a drop in a cup of water. It's just like, maybe that much. I'm just going to pour in here. Yes, I'm just going to water all these over the sink and let them drain. All right, you guys, I am back outside and I have the imports back in their homes. I'm gonna give you guys a closer look at everyone. We'll start with the Monstera Esqueleto. Look at how good that looks on this pole. I am literally <laughs> obsessed with it. So the newest growth will come out of this leaf here. And you can kind of see how that tape is on there. Yes, I'm very excited for this one. It has lots of room to grow before I would need to extend it. And here's the rest of them. So this is the variegated Adansonia and you can see it's working on the new leaf. And I feel like this one, I'd have to extend probably sooner than later. But I feel like I did a good job trying to get it straight on the pole. And I think it looks really healthy. And you can kind of see the tape job that I did there. I tried to tape like each node. 
the anthurium with the two big leaves and the anthurium is in a very very chunky mix there we have the milano cutting that's in this semi-hydro setup so the water comes to like halfway that starbucks lady and so it's just going to wick up moisture and then when i feel like the reservoir isn't you know is, is drying out i'll fill it up some so it's going to continue to root in there and then these two are potted into my normal chunky mix the skindapsis and then the florida beauty and so I feel like, you know, they're gonna do well in there. I'm gonna try and bring these in for a period during the day, I think. Let them sit inside maybe for half the day and then put them back out here and kind of slowly acclimate them to being inside. Yeah, I'll just definitely have to figure out where I'm gonna put these because I am running out of space, but they look so good. I'm definitely gonna make sure that the moss poles stay hydrated. And then once the soil, I don't want the soil to get overly dry, but I would say probably when it's dry about halfway, I might give them some more water because I don't want them to completely dry out. But I'm gonna leave them out here for the remainder of the day. And then tomorrow I will bring them in probably for a few hours and gradually increase it. And I think probably by the end of the weekend, I might go ahead and just, you know, keep them inside. Thank you guys so much for watching this process with me. And I'll definitely do an update video once I have some new growth and I will definitely keep you updated on the Milano wet stick. You guys can see that process with me and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they'll root and not rot on me because I have a feeling probably a few of those nodes are just going to end up rotting. It just, just happens sometimes, especially when you're already dealing with root rot. It's really hard to get rid of once you I already have like a wet stick that's rotting. So we'll see how it goes. And yeah, I'm really excited for them. I think they're all gonna do well. And I'm excited to just see the kind of growth I get. And I'm just really thankful and excited for these plants. Thank you so much. And for joining me on this journey with rehabbing these imports, I will definitely keep you guys updated and I will talk to you all again very soon.